move on now to the U.S. stock index futures posted solid gains ahead of Monday's open, supported by positive trade overseas and a strong jobs report published on Friday. Around 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures popped uh, 108 points, indicating a higher open of 121.52 points. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures indicated an upbeat start to their respective trading sessions. Our consumer credit is due out at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, while personal and household products company Helen of Troy is expected to publish its latest earnings. On the central bank in front, a Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari is expected to appear the two-day home ownership in Indian country creating the Opportunity for Choice Conference in Prior Lake, Minnesota. Elsewhere, President Donald Trump is expected to announce his nominee choice for the Supreme Court Justice. Uh, that's uh, today's evening to replace Attorney Kennedy, who is retiring at the end of July. And in Asia, shares closed higher following the release of strong employment data for the month of June. Meanwhile, Investors continued to keep an eye on trade after the U.S. and China exchange tariffs last week. Japan's Nikkei 225 rose 1.21 percent to close at 22,052.18, buoyed by broad-based gains across sectors, including banking, electronic appliances, and metal products, with pharmaceuticals leading gains on the index. The Kospi saw slimmer gains in South Korea, rising by 0.57%. In Australia, the S&P is 200 other 0.22%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index advanced 1.5%, while the Shanghai Composite rose 2.49%. The smaller Shenzhen Composite gained 2.51%. Well, back here, Nigeria, Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, will consider listing his oil refinery to account for half of his conglomerate's assets on the London Stock Exchange after it comes on stream next year, as his focus shifts to oil and gas from late 2019. Though Africa's biggest crude oil producer, Nigeria, imports almost all of its gasoline due to poor maintenance of its four state-owned refineries. Dangote has built his fortune on cement, although his sprawling business empire also spans floor milling, agriculture and real estate. Now he's building the world's largest single oil refinery and also expanding into fertilizer, aiming to address long-standing problems in Nigeria's energy markets. Dangote hopes to meet the fuel needs of Africa's most populous nation, where poor power supply forces families and business to rely on diesel-powered generators. Dangote Group Executive Director the Vacuuma Edwin said the $10 billion refinery should be completed by December 2019. We will complete the, bring the project to mechanical completion of the refinery by December next year and start commissioning the project from early 2020. And the project the refinery is also unique. You know, you talked about supply chain. We didn't want to be dependent upon any single type of our sourcing of crude. So the you know, refinery is designed to handle all the African crews, part of the Middle East crew, and the American crew. So we have a wide flexibility. Depending upon the prevailing market prices, we can source the crude from different sources to have a very optimum cost. Dangote Cements, Nigeria's biggest listed company, has attracted investment from Dubai and South African sovereign funds. It posted a 2017 profit of 289.6 billion naira, up 60% on 2016, and is valued at $4 billion. Edwin says the oil refinery with capacity to produce 650,000 tons would also target export markets. Our primary focus is, of course, Nigeria to meet the entire local demand. But our capacity is so large, we can export more than 50% of our production outside. So the secondary focus will be on Western Africa and Central Africa. But we can also, for example, gasoline is in demand in Brazil. We can export. It's short-sailing. And aviation jet is in huge demand in Europe. We can export. 
So, but to meet those qualities, you need a very high quality product. The product has to be of Euro 5 quality if you have to use, export to any of the Western countries. So, my, the refinery is tuned to produce Euro 5 grain. According to him, the company had held talks with firms, including Shell, over the supply of crude and lifting of petroleum products for sale abroad. The Dangote refinery will be able to process different grades of crude, including Shell oil. The company is borrowing $3.3 billion for the project, arranged by Standard Chattered Bank. The remainder will be funded by equity and through export agencies. Dangote has also acquired two oil fields in Nigeria from Shell to help supply the refinery. We have an opportunity, in, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, to focus inward and develop our own manufacturing base. So it has got no immediate relevance to the trade war because we are exporting primarily um, commodities, so it's not going to have an impact. Other area which could have an impact is exporting agricultural products because their farmers can be displaced from jobs. We are not exporting agricultural products today. So the trade war is not going to have a negative impact. But on the positive side, it may open up an opportunity to some extent to say manufacture and take the produced goods. Because if there is a restriction on China exporting their finished goods into US market, now a window is opening we can develop our own manufacturing base and then take the products. Dangote will consider listing the oil refinery once it comes on stream and that would follow a planned listing of the cement company in London next year after elections in Nigeria. Well, the International Monetary Fund expects Cameroon's economy to grow 4% this year, up from 3.2% in 2017 due to the start of natural gas production and construction work for an upcoming soccer tournament. According to the fund, growth was slower in 2017 because of a sharp decline in oil output, but new infrastructure projects and increased private investment should bring it to at least 5% in the medium term. Cameroon, one of Central Africa's largest economies, produces about 180,000 barrels per day of oil and is Africa's fourth biggest cocoa producer. The IMF warned, however, that the economy faces considerable risks, including deteriorating security in its English-speaking regions, cocoa and oil-producing areas, where, where separatists are waging a deadly insurgency and high debts. And the International Monetary Fund has approved the payment of a $250 million tranche, the fourth from Tunisia's loan program, tied to the economic reforms aimed at keeping its deficit under control. The tranche brings disbursement so far under the four-year program to $1.139 billion. The program agreement reached in 2016 is worth about $2.8 billion. Tunisia has been praised as the only democratic success among the nations where Arab Spring revolts took place in 2011, but successive governments have failed to trim its fiscal deficit and create economic growth. Tunisia's central bank last month raised its key interest rate by 100 basis points to 6.75%, the second hike in three months to tackle inflation that has reached the highest level since 1990.